welcome back to Microteaching with Mr. Newmark. Know your enemy. Why was the discovery of germ theory so significant? As always, the best place to begin is our focus questions, and there's three of those. First of all, we want to describe germ theory itself. Secondly, we want to explain causes of discovery. And thirdly, we want to evaluate the relative significance of those causes. Now, germ theory begins way back in the Renaissance during the 1600s, when a Dutch clockmaker called Van Leeuwenhoek invents the first microscope. This was a crude instrument, but it did allow him to see that on almost everything he studied, there were tiny little creatures, which he called animalcules. There's not really any development until the 1800s, when a British doctor called Lister takes advantage of improved glass to invent the first sophisticated microscope. This allows him to magnify up to a thousand times without distortion and means that scientists could now also study the behaviour of these animalcules. Extremely interested in this whole field was a French scientist called Louis Pasteur. In the 1850s, Pasteur was hired by a brewing company to try and work out why their beer kept going bad and losing them money. Pasteur believed that this was probably because of these animalcules and set about boiling the liquid in which the beer was made to kill these. This worked and none of the beer went bad. And this process of pasteurization, we still use that word today, was rolled out to a whole host of other industries, including wine, vinegar, and milk. Pasteur now strongly suspected that these animalcules were causing decay and rot, but couldn't prove it. In the 1860s, or in 1860 itself, the French Academy of Science announced a competition for the first scientist to prove completely what was causing decay and rot. Being extremely ambitious, Pasteur entered immediately. In this competition, he was running up against another famous French scientist called Pouchet. Pouchet believed in an older theory called spontaneous generation. In this theory, the rot itself is actually created by the material which is rotting. For example, if you saw a rotting piece of meat with mould on it, or even maggots, this theory would say that that mould or maggots was actually created by that material itself. To prove this theory wrong, Pasteur took two flasks. One of those flasks, or in fact both of them, he opened to the open air, so they were exposed to these animalcules, or germs as he came to call them. He then heated one up to kill all the germs inside it, sterilising it, and then sealed it with some material that should otherwise rot. For the other flask, he simply sealed it. Now, predictably, well, predictably for us today, the material that had been sterilised did not grow any germs, and indeed didn't for another hundred years, while the one that was not sterilised did. By this, Pasteur had won the competition and proved that it was germs that were causing decay and rot. He hadn't, however, proved that germs caused disease, although he did suspect it, and did some work with silkworms in the French silk industry, which suggested that actually, yes, it was germs causing disease as well as rot. Definitively, making this link fell to another scientist, a German called Robert Koch. Now, between 1875 and 1878, Robert Koch devised a series of careful experiments to prove that it was the anthrax germ which was killing sheep. Now to do this, he took a sheep that had died of anthrax, he used a microscope to examine the insides of that sheep and find the germ he thought that had caused the trouble. He withdrew that with a syringe and inserted it into a mouse. That mouse predictably died of anthrax. He then took that germ out from the mouse and put it into another mouse and repeated that over 20 generations. Each mouse died of anthrax. By doing this, he had proved that it was the germ itself which was causing disease. And following this method, it was now possible to prove that typhoid, TB, cholera and tetanus were all caused by germs. A huge turning point, because now people knew it was the germs that were causing disease. Robert Koch also made two other important improvements. He developed a semi-solid medium, which made it easier to grow and study bacteria instead of the liquid that Pasteur had been using. And he also developed staining, which was a technique used to colour the bacteria he was studying, which meant they were easier to see and work with. At this point, it's important to acknowledge that France and Germany were fierce enemies, largely because of the war they'd fought together between 1870 and 1871. And for this reason, Pasteur and the French government were deeply unhappy that Koch and Germany appeared to be more advanced, improving quickly, improving more, more quickly than France was. 
So for this reason, the French government gave Pasteur a huge amount of money and a team of advanced scientists to work with to try and develop the first vaccination, a way of actually killing disease, not just recognising it. To do this, they set about a series of experiments on chicken cholera. They kept trying to introduce weaker and weaker chicken cholera diseases into a chicken to see if the weaker disease would cure it. They, uh, they copied this technique from Jenner, who um, you'll have learned about earlier in the course. Now, the real breakthrough came by through sheer chance, when they left out one of the old germs over the summer. And when it was injected into a, cholera, uh, into a chicken later, that chicken didn't die, and then when the live disease was introduced, it also survived. This was the first scientifically developed vaccination, and by using the same technique, it was now possible for Pasteur's team to develop uh, vaccinations for anthrax and also for rabies. Now, I just want to pause for a minute to just assess and discuss the absolute significance of this and why germs were a huge theory point, uh, a turning point. Now, if you think about it, up until germ theory, although there have been lots of theories for the causes of disease, and some have been more helpful than others, they've all been wrong, which means that it was never really going to be possible to develop truly effective cures using them. Germs are what cause disease, and that means this is a huge turning point with all the treatments now focused on treating something that people actually knew was real. Before I finish, I would also suggest that you work back through this mind map and try and find examples of chance, war, individual, individual genius, scientific methods and technology, because you might be asked about the role of these in an exam. Let's quickly review our focus questions and then we'll finish. Can you now describe germ theory? Can you explain the causes of that discovery? Work through in sequence. And the third question should take you a bit longer and you might want to pause the video and just use the mind map to think about it. Which of these factors, which of these causes was most important? And why was that cause more important than all the others? Thank you very much for listening. More videos to follow.